So America under Theodore Roosevelt is a way better Civ in Civ 6 than they were in Civ 5. It seems like they get kind of an extra boost uh, instead of like the, the four bonuses that most Civs get. They kind of get a fifth. And actually, if you really look at it, I'd argue that America's getting six bonuses. Not just five, but six. And that's partly because Theodore Roosevelt offers three separate bonuses for his leader ability. Let's talk about the first one. He gives America a combat bonus for fighting on the home continent. This is huge. Whether you're fighting barbarians early on, whether you're trying to stop a neighbor from forward settling you, uh, whether you're just trying to defend your continent after you've already taken it over, you're going to get this, this bonus throughout the entire game. We've seen this same sort of description tied down to certain unique units, and obviously those unique units are going to be locked down behind certain eras and stuff like that, but America's going to get this the entire game, early to late. I'm guessing it's probably not going to be like the biggest bonus, I'm guessing something like 5-10%. to 10%. That's still really helpful though, especially early on, but it'll still be useful later in the game. Let's talk about the second part of the leader ability. National Parks offer bonus cultural output. Pretty cool. A little nice bonus because uh, there's something else that we'll talk about later in this video uh, that gives you another cultural bonus. Uh, finally, Theodore Roosevelt offers a unique unit, the Rough Rider, a special type of cavalry uh, that gets combat bonuses in hills. It will give you culture for kills on the home continent and then it's cheaper to maintain. Really amazing leader. I think that's needless to say. Let's talk about the special ability now, Founding Fathers. This is going to lower the time it takes to gain government bonuses. So there are government bonuses in Civ VI. Uh, there's different governments you're going to unlock in different eras of the game. And uh, each one is going to offer individual bonuses. Not just the policies you enact, you choose for your government slots, but they're also going to individually offer you bonuses. And, and you're going to be able to get those a little bit faster as America. Pretty awesome. Let's talk about the other unique unit, the P-51 Mustang, a superior fighter, and uh, it does extra damage and has better range. So, I mean, kind of kind of like Civ 5, they had like an awesome bomber, um, but we get, a, we get a fighter this time, so that's, that'll be useful later in the game. Finally, the unique building, the film studio. A big cultural bonus exclusive to the modern era. Uh, America, like I said, they just seem so good. They seem so good. Uh, whether you want to go for a cultural victory or a domination, America is going to be really, really good at either one. I mean, at this point, we don't really know Civ 6's cultural victory requirements, but I could see maybe, if, if it's still applicable, the Civ 5 strategy, where you just take over most of the worlds and then win a cultural victory that way. You don't even have to, you know, kill everybody off. You just need to kill the cultural civs so you can just squeeze in there and win the, uh, the tourism victory. But again, we don't know the, the exact defining terms for a cultural victory at the moment. Either way, uh, geez, America looks so good. So let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite American bonus. There's, there's a lot to choose from, certainly. And if you want more Civ 6 leader breakdowns, they'll be over here. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy these videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.